New on Denver 7 News at 11, Brittany Griner is adjusting to life as a free woman. Her next steps after landing in the U.S. overnight in a high-stakes Russian prisoner swap. And new details about the Club Q suspects past why police say there was no reason to file red flag order after a 2021 bomb threat. And with COVID numbers taking up again, why Denver is ending a pandemic renter program tonight. Thanks for joining us on Denver 7 News at 11. I'm Veronica Acosta. We begin with breaking news. Within the last hour, Brittany Griner arrived at a Texas Army Medical Center for what the Pentagon says is a routine medical evaluation. Officials say they'll offer all available assistance to Griner and her family as they adjust to her being back stateside. ABC's Faith Abube is in San Antonio where Griner landed with the latest. Overnight, that long-awaited moment, WNBA star Brittany Griner seen stepping out of a plane and onto U.S. soil, then undergoing an evaluation at the Brook Army Medical Center in San Antonio. White House National Security Spokesman John Kirby on NBC. She was in very, very good spirits when she got off the plane um, and appeared to be uh, obviously in good health. Russian authorities took Griner into custody at a Moscow airport nearly 10 months ago. I made an honest mistake. After months of painstaking negotiations, sources tell ABC News a deal to release Griner came together just this week. She's on the ground. Stop it. President Biden and Russian officials agreeing to a prisoner swap. The U.S. releasing convicted Russian arms dealer Victor Boot in exchange for Griner. Are you ready for a flight? Uh, yes. Yes. Griner's long journey home, captured in part by Russian state media. Videos show the basketball star leaving a penal colony. Hours later, Griner seen in a red coat on a tarmac in Abu Dhabi, released into U.S. custody. The Biden administration facing criticism for securing only Griner's release and not that of former U.S. Marine Paul Whelan, who's being detained on espionage charges he denies. Administration officials saying Russia rejected all possible offers to bring Whelan home. Whelan speaking to CNN from prison. I'm happy that Brittany is going home today. I'm greatly disappointed that more has not been done to secure my release. This was not a choice uh, about which American to bring home. Uh, the choice was, in this instance, one or none. And the Biden administration has been adamant that negotiations to secure Whelan's release have not stopped. In fact, Russian President Vladimir Putin acknowledged as much, saying contact with U.S. officials continue with the possibility of further swaps. In San Antonio, Texas, Faith Abube, ABC News. And we're following another big national story, a political bombshell from Arizona Senator Kirsten Sinema. She's leaving the Democratic Party to be an independent. I just not worried about folks who may not like this approach. What I am worried about is continuing to do what's right for my state. I'm going to still come to work and hopefully serve on uh, the same committees I've been serving on and continue to work well with my colleagues of both political parties. Cinema has been a major swing vote for Democrats and a key holdout for pri President Biden's domestic agenda. Her leaving the Democratic Party is a huge blow to Democrats who just won another seat in Georgia's runoff. Cinema says she won't caucus with Republicans, but she also hasn't explicitly said she'll do so with Democrats either. We now know a bomb threat case from last year against the Club Q suspect was dropped because their family refused to testify. A judge unsealed more than 100 pages of court records that happened just yesterday. We've learned investigators seized multiple items that day, including a pistol with no serial number and a rifle. Both of those weapons are still in custody of the sheriff's office. That explains why police never sought a red flag order to remove the suspect's weapons. They already had them. One of the survivors of the Club Q shooting is back home this morning. Ed Sanders received a standing ovation when he left UC Health yesterday. He spent more than three weeks at the hospital in Colorado Springs. He was recovering from gunshot wounds to both his back and leg. Oh, I'm so relieved and overjoyed. I don't know what to say. Good luck with everything. Thank you. Ed says he's excited to recover at home and spend time with his cat. Lucky. A deputy shot and killed a Larimer County man while serving an eviction notice. It happened yesterday morning. That was near Harmony Road and Horsetooth Drive. Deputies say when they told the man they were there to evict him, he pointed a gun at them. One of the deputies fired. The man died at a nearby hospital. The shooting now under investigation. 
and the Colorado Naloxone Project is taking its mission from emergency rooms stocking up on the life-saving drug over to labor and delivery, adding the opioid antidote to their units as well. The Colorado Sun reports 14 of Colorado's 48 labor and delivery units have already agreed to carry naloxone. Supporters want all of them to do it next year because the top causes of death for Colorado moms are overdose and suicide. Expectant moms will be screened for potential risks and then given the drug to take home with them when they're released with their brand new babies. And for the rest of us, the life-saving drug could be available over the counter early next year. Here's Mandy Geither. It's an important weapon in the fight against opioid overdose deaths in the U.S. Naloxone is a medication that is saving lives in my community and in my hospital every day. Narcan is the brand name version of naloxone. It's used to reverse an opioid overdose. The drug maker says the nasal spray has now been granted priority review by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, which means it could be available over the counter by the end of March. Currently, Narcan is available without a prescription in all 50 states, but every state has its own set of policies that can be confusing. And that kind of confusion is exactly what we do not want. In some states, Narcan is placed behind the counter, meaning a person would have to talk to a pharmacy employee to get it. Last year, there were more than 107,000 estimated drug overdose deaths in the U.S., according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The agency says synthetic opioids accounted for most of the deaths. Narcan is very simple to use. It is safe, it is effective, it's something that all of us can carry in our pocket in case we come across someone who's experiencing an overdose. If approved by the FDA, the drug maker says Narcan would be the first 4 milligram naloxone nasal spray available over the counter in the U.S. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Colorado doctors say now is the time to get vaccinated against flu and COVID before holiday gatherings because it takes two weeks for most vaccines to be effective. More than 300 Coloradans were hospitalized for the flu. That was last week, and there have been 1700 RSV related hospitalizations since October. The state health department says we're on track to surpass last year's flu numbers. And today's the day for renters to apply for Denver's Pandemic Rental Assistance Program. Over nearly two years, the city has given qualified applicants up to 18 months of rent money through this emergency fund. The program officially stops taking those applications tonight at midnight, though. The Department of Housing has distributed $130 million. That's been to more than 13,000 households. I spoke with the chief housing officer here in Denver. She told me the fund isn't completely out of money quite yet, but they say that there's just not enough money to keep it open past tonight. We are now towards the end of the money and of this program. And so we have sufficient applications at this time uh, to distribute the remaining funds. And so we wanted to make sure that we were uh, closing down applications and setting the expectation that we are distributing remaining funds, but there is a conclusion here to this program. Fisher told me she hates to see this fund dry up, but the good news is there are other funds just like it. They're called the Temporary Rent and Utility Assistance Program. The city has had that one in place since 2016. While the calendar is about to mark one year since the devastating Marshall Fire, most families still dealing with insurance and figuring out how to go about rebuilding. This weekend is being called a weekend of healing. It's really more about um, just helping people through um, a very difficult time with it being the holidays, with the remembrances of the fire. Um, so it is meant to be very peaceful um, and hopefully healing um, for individuals and families. So today there's a walk of remembrance and a meditation class. There are rejuvenating events all weekend for fire victims. You can learn a whole lot more on the Boulder County website. Just search for Marshall Fire Commemoration. And today we're learning how officials plan to bring wolves back into Colorado. In 2020, voters approved Prop 114. It required Colorado Parks and Wildlife to reintroduce and manage gray wolves by the end of next year. A stakeholder group created rather multiple recommendations, including on how to capture the wolves, release them, and prevent conflicts with livestock. CPW has created its draft plan, and it's available online over at wolfengagementco.org. There will be five statewide hearings in both January and February.
And still ahead, how Colorado is leading the charge when it comes to challenging the King Super Safeway merger that could change how we all do our grocery shopping. And my dad had this stuff laying around and he's like, you know what, I can repurpose that for something. So that's what he did. How you can keep the magic of the famous Sweatsville Zoo alive and take home your very own bizarre sculptures.